So, with the new Gendy Tartakovsky show Primal coming to Adult Swim this fall, I'm going to talk about one of his most divisive works to date, the finale of Samurai Jack. This finale may not have divided fans so catastrophically as Last Jedi, or Game of Thrones, or fucking My Little Pony Season 3, but many felt cheated by how rushed and short it was with wrapping up its character arcs. However, the ones who actually do like this finale insist there's something greater under the surface, especially Jack's arc. So I'm going to try to settle this shit once and for all, because I too have some mighty hangups with this this final episode. But before that, it's best I flex first, so... Boom! SJ poster signed by Phil Lamar from 2017 Comic-Con, an 11 by 17 fan art poster also from Comic-Con, the entire box set collection of Samurai Jack, this awesome plaque that came with it, and a big ass Aku poster. Samurai Jack is fucking awesome. It is my number one childhood show alongside Batman the Animated Series. And when season five was announced, every other repressed fan and I had simultaneous heart attacks all around the world. Upon its release, the first four episodes were a visceral, grizzled, and incredible feat of visual storytelling and the most damning testament to Gendy's talent. But the rest of the season... Well, let's talk about it. First, a quick recap. Awesome, awesome, holy fucking shit, this is awesome. Also awesome, K. Oh cool, awesome, Gendy, you absolute mad lad. Awesome as all fuck. And then... Okay, so, uh... Things start out pretty damn good. It's in media res, the music by Tyler Bates is fucking amazing, I mean, why do you think I used it in the intro? And in a callback to episode 6 of the season, we get to see all of Jack's past allies across the world gathering amidst an apocalyptic announcement. Which leads to... Long ago in a distant land, I, Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness. Oh my god, Gendy, you magnificent bastard. That's... absolutely brilliant. The original intro to Samurai Jack was propaganda made by Aku 50 years in the future. That's... That's ingenious! Plus, it's an amazing tribute to his original voice actor, Marco! And the cherry on top of it all is the millions of lives Jack has affected are all united in watching their hero, the last paragon of hope they had, fall into the clutches of Aku. Who, by the way, gives a wonderfully immature and mocking speech, perfectly in character. Yeah, I really can't find it in me to fault anything about these first three minutes. However... Huh. You know, after all these years, I'm not really sure how I want to do it. Okay, so... That's forced. It's funny, but it's forced. But not nearly as forced as Jack tirelessly repeating to a possessed Ashi to fight! FIGHT! Fight, Ashi. Fight. I know you are still in there. I... Are you kidding me? We're doing this. This is ridiculous. This is the definition of writing yourself into a corner. Gendy must have had this whole epic intro in mind and forgot that immediately afterwards, Jack should have realistically died. So, now we're stuck doing this shit. This contrived pit stop of a scene. Why is this so bad? So then Aku tells Ashi to kill him, but of course she doesn't because Cavalry X Machina. Jack, we're here to rescue you! Alright, um, a few questions. How did everyone in the world know where Aku's fortress is? How did they all get there in under two fucking minutes? 
Or was Aku just being indecisive for over a day and Ashi and Jack were just sitting there? How did the archers and the woolies and the Spartans all get on top of the spire? Why does the Scotsman get there last when he's the last one that actually knows where Aku is? And rather impertinently, why am I not freaking out in excitement seeing all of Jack's allies returning the favor and saving Jack? Probably because it was obvious as hell, it was built up poorly, and none of them get any proper fanfare, or closure, or dialogue, or... anything. So yeah, it's gonna be a whole lot of this for a while. The action in this episode is weak as hell, which when you consider how good the show was at driving the story with the action, this is really bad. There's no impact to this action, even though there's a sizable body count. Compare this to episode 9's action. You can feel each sword strike, you can feel the tension, the stakes, the character's interaction, you can anticipate the fallout of this battle. This is just random noise. Pow, boom, slash, death, ooh, ah, look how crazy all of this is, isn't this amazing? No, it's not. Because Samurai Jack never did this DCEU bullshit. The action was always close, intimate, tense, tight, and extremely well animated and choreographed. This action is just basic cartoon violence. And for a Samurai Jack finale, you really don't want that. Though I suppose it's not all bad, because we do get this scene. Oi, you gotta meet me, pony daughters. There's Flora. Maeve, Isla, Pradana, Martina, Alana, Oban, Arti, Fiona, Asi, Bonnie, Lorna, Molina, Shona, Nora, Hazel, Shanna, Eusbeth, Epe, Freya, Devanta, Gesha, Grisella, Ines, Dantha, Cora, Davina, Kina. So many. That is just fucking hilarious. And I love the Scotsman, he can do no wrong. Plus, their interaction, while rushed, is still authentic and one of the better moments of the episode. Oh, and this scene! A giant stone samurai. Really? <laughs> That's just awesome. Alright, so Ashi gains back control of her consciousness because of fucking course she does, and then she fights Aku for 10 seconds, and then Jack says, You have Aku's powers! And then she grabs the sword, and she makes a time portal, and they escape, and then- WAIT, WHAT?! Just wait, I- but- Just like that?! What?! I- But- but all your friends died, Jack! All your friends died trying to save you! You didn't even get to say goodbye! They all just got skewered in an Aku death storm and you just fucking left! Like, we... we didn't get anything! No closure at all! Not a thank you for your help, friends! Nothing! Good lord! No wonder people were pissed! This should have been the most cathartic and rewarding moment in the entire series! Jack is going home! But it's almost a freaking footnote in the episode! What a fucking load! So we then get a rather charming recreation of the most pivotal scene from the first ever episode. You might have beaten me now, but I will destroy you in the future. There is no future for you, Aku. Yeah, it's pretty great. And Greg Baldwin does a great job recreating Aku's sliminess. He did a fantastic job throughout all of Season 5, honestly. While it was a noticeable difference, he really did capture the essence, sadism, and humor of the character. I also like how he didn't try to copy Mako exactly. He made the role his own and has some of the better moments of the season. Hats off to you, Greg. You wonderful, wonderful human being. And this always makes me laugh. <laughs> Already. So Jack kills Aku, and where was this trademark Gendy shit the rest of the episode? Boom, pow, bam, he's dead. Yay, we did it, hooray. Why is Ashi still alive? Dramatic timing. They return home. Hmm, that's funny, looking a lot less enslaved and ruled by Aku's minions since the last time we saw it, Gendy. 
So they have a wedding, and all of Jack's trainers show up. That was nice. Ah, she dies. Oh no, how tragic, how sad. This whole part of the episode is so fucking BORING! Not only do we know everything that's going to happen right down to the Thanosing of Ashi, but it's so long in the tooth and drawn out that this time should have been given to Jack's allies! Also, why isn't this whole village still in ruins?! With Aku monuments and everything! Gandhi! And then there's this scene. This incredible fucking scene. This absolutely wonderfully atmospheric and heartfelt and astonishing scene. Jack, alone, laments on everything he's ever known being taken from him. Even though he's brought peace to his home, his sorrow and suffering is too great for his victory to outweigh. But a lady bug, similar to the one that had throughout Ashi's arc of achieving freedom, serves as an everlasting reminder of hope for Jack. The same notion that kept him alive throughout his 50-year-plus quest is the same thing that will keep him going for years to come. This is what Samurai Jack is, and it's what the rest of the episode should have been. And what cements it as being so good is that it's dialogueless. It lets the beautiful visuals, the music, and the atmosphere speak for itself, and it's incredibly effective. It's what made the series so effective in the first place. For some reason, Gendy forgot about that for the majority of this episode. There are moments of that wonderful charm and artistry, but nothing more than just moments. Now, granted, I'm no writer, and I certainly don't know how to end this series satisfyingly, but then again, this was kind of the biggest disadvantage Season 5 had going in. No matter what, nothing could satisfy over a decade of hype, expectations, fanfare, and storytelling. Oh, wait! Alright, so is it good or is it bad? Well... It's bad. It's really bad. And I hate saying that, but it, it's, yeah, it's, it's bad. But every other episode of the show is good, so hey, one bad episode isn't that terrible. Shame it had to be the fucking finale. But you know, you win some and you lose some in this life. This finale fails to properly satisfy its character arcs, or she's especially, but yet somehow at the end it still manages to fulfill its story arc. In the middle of it all, it tries so hard to appeal to everyone in the fanbase, and in doing so, it ends up sabotaging itself. But is there anything of value here? Well, yes, but it's hard to appreciate in hindsight amidst the rushed nature of the episode. It's bad writing at worst and a mixed bag at best. And while it is unfortunate that this amazing show had such an incomplete end, that shouldn't discredit what came before. I still hold this show to a very high esteem, and I love introducing more people to it. It's a damn good work of art, with no Saturday morning bullshit about it. And while it's nowhere near perfect, I still love me some good old Samurai Jack.